arguably the greatest Camaro ever produced, this extremely limited production Z28 is surely a sight to see. A little bit dusty and the quarter panel's missing, but it's got potential, okay? In the first video, we tackled the mechanical side of the repairs on this Z28. After deciding which one to fix, the other Z28 became the donor. Rear subframe, rear suspension, seats, and driver quarter panel. Now we have what we need to properly fix this Nürburgring monster. The price, the mileage, the mods, and the power level are all details that are gonna have to be discussed later in the video because we still have plenty of work to do. We already swapped the driver door with a correctly painted door from a ZL1 that happened to come through the shop. And of course, we properly disposed of the old door. Both Lee and I are learning as much as we can on the bodywork side of things, but a roughly $50,000, one of 1,800 ever produced Z28 Camaro is not the car to give it our best shot on. So we had to schedule some time with somebody that knows what they're doing. Tim, what's up, man? What's up, man? It's true Bandito. Who? <laughs> you know it. How are you? Pretty good. What do you think, dude? How bad is she? I'm surprised it totaled, honestly. Well, so to be fair, this thing had a lot of suspension damage. Oh, okay. We had to swap the entire rear subframe off of a donor car, but I'm pleased to hear that from the body side of things, since that's the stuff that we have left to fix, it doesn't look too bad to you. No, no, it's not too bad. Just inner wheelhouse section. It's a little crinkle, but we can just get that pulled out. And then new quarter panel and some glass, and you're pretty much good as new. The B pillar's pretty straight. I mean, you got the door to close where it is so i haven't screwed anything up thus far and from this point forward it's going to be letting him show us what we need to do part of this video is going to be me learning right alongside with you guys so i'm super excited to see what to me looks like a pretty in-depth repair and i think that there's a lot to learn here so that on future cars we'll be able to tackle some of this stuff ourselves all right man what's the plan of attack here you cut it at a good spot here because this quarter actually mounts underneath the roof. We can take some of these spot welds back and peel the roof back a little bit without damaging it and then slide it back in underneath Okay. Um, and weld it all the way through. The quarter panel will come with the whole A-pillar and everything like that, but since your A-pillar is fine and your hinges are straight and you got this all to line up, that's like a good placemaker to like make sure that like when we put the quarter on and test fit it, that if it's lining up with this door, which is lined up with the fenders, which hasn't moved, we're good. A good chop in here somewhere around the window, the quarter glass, would probably be the best. Right now we're still waiting on the quarter panel because it's like seven to 10 days out. We're gonna go ahead and just take it back as far as we can for now, and then get it ready to start doing some uh, wheelhouse pulling on the frame machine. Yeah, so about that quarter panel, in the first video you all saw me remove it from the other Z28 and well, Maybe I should have strapped that down. Yeah, that would probably been a solid idea. Ooh. Yeah. It's so funny when you like start marking spot welds, how like not, they're not like placed like evenly and they're not like in the right spot. They're like kind of like in and out, they're like oh, whatever. <laughs> So do you have like a spot weld, you know, like drill bit ratio figured out how many you can drill with each one before you got to bust open a new one? No, you can, you can tell when it's starting to like, the tip's starting to thaw out. Yeah, because I think... It's always better to just stop. Yeah, I think I did like, I don't know, maybe a hundred with one bit, so <laughs> I might have been pushing the envelope. Like 15, 20 maybe with one bit. All right, well, good to know for next time. There she is.
Yeah, boy. Find another VIN sticker. I was literally just thinking that's the only thing that is a little bit inconvenient about where this thing is damaged yeah. is that the uh, the VIN sticker is going to be on that panel. So I will have to hang on to that just for, you know, originality purposes. All right, look at that, though. Cool. Yeah, and so I, I cut it through this circle right here, so there's a nice locator. So on the new panel, I can find this exact cutout and then cut straight through it. We have these two holes for the lower door catch, which would be nice to line up. Same with the ones too for the actual door latch. So this is gonna be the biggest thing right here, pulling this mushed up uh, inner wheelhouse. I guess worst case scenario if we have to get into replacing that we'll just be looking at a lot more time a lot more labor but yeah obviously can be done if need be yeah it's its own panel here but it also sits behind this so yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a pain, we have a little bit of a wait for the new quarter panel from gm since we didn't really plan on using a new one but that's going to give us time to go ahead and get this thing on the frame machine of course when i say us i mean tim and we're going to figure out if that inner wheelhouse is going to be an issue if it is then we can go ahead and get one ordered up I haven't seen this car look like this the entire time that we have owned it. It hasn't been cleaned up quite like this, but look at the quarter panel. Oh yes. Side skirt back on it. It is a complete car. I have the glass back at the shop. We are going to get that installed as soon as we get it back and get everything put together in the interior of the car we have to take care of the airbag light but man look at this thing totally complete put back together i couldn't be more excited right on cue the man the myth the legend 
This thing's looking good. Need some glass. Oh man, she looks fantastic. Yeah. No, no more headaches. Nothing crazy. Just, just the work putting it back together, huh? Yep. Yeah, just putting it back together. Well, nothing dramatic. We just got to get the thing loaded back on the trailer, get it back to the shop, and get this all put back together. As I was installing these rear seats, I noticed that they were kind of banged up, to be honest. They're supposed to be like a metal piece that goes across on both of those sections that on the seat bottom was actually ripped out. This goes right in there like that. And more importantly, the backrest. I noticed when I put it in that this is like way bent out and you can see that it broke the foam in here. And luckily, I have the set from the blue car, which is in fine condition because we took those ones apart. And I pulled back up the auction pictures, and in the auction pictures, whatever body shop got a hold of this out in Nebraska just did an awful job getting the rear seat out and damaged it pretty heavily. But one thing that I noticed also is the actual construction. These here are from an SS because I was going to swap everything over. Look at the difference on the bottoms of these. They are completely different construction. All foam, just like this uh, kind of foam. I don't even know what you really call this. It's like formed and then this is the actual molded foam. The backrest is even different as far as the construction goes. I'm going to show you the weight difference on this right now. These are the SS seats and they have kind of like a particle board kind of backing on the backrest piece. You can see 28 pounds. Look at that, roughly 10 pounds just in the rear seats alone. But that seems to be the lengths that Chevrolet went to with this Z28. I believe that the Z28 is 200 pounds lighter. Could be 100 pounds. I believe it's 200 pounds lighter than any other Camaro 5th gen version. So you see 10 pounds is just in the rear seat alone with a little bit different construction. That's how they did it. It's a rainy, crappy spring day here in Maryland, but perfect opportunity for us to do something indoors, like put the Z28 on the dyno. So we're over here at Anderson Performance East, a local resource we've done some business with over the years. They specialize in a lot of pretty cool go fast stuff, and they have a dyno that we are gonna make use of today. The Z28 has some mods on it, upgraded cam, full exhaust, as you probably heard earlier in the video. So naturally, we're curious how much power this thing makes Two quick pulls, huge thank you to Billy and the guys over here at Anderson Performance East. They literally squeezed us in to get this thing on the dyno. But all we needed was two pulls. I wanted to do one with the cutouts closed and one with the cutouts open. You can see we picked up roughly six horsepower. So kind of cool to see that the cutouts actually do something. Now is six horsepower worth 
having the cutouts on there. Me personally, I love the way it sounds with the cutouts closed. I'm never driving this thing around with the cutouts open. But now that we know how much power this thing makes, the last thing that we need to do is go over the numbers for this car. So let's head over to the shop and we'll do just that. And this is the section of the video where the comment section is going to blow up. Purchase price on this car. $40,865 with fees from Copart. Yeah, we paid that much for this car. And I'm going to explain why at the end of this. Transport, $1,200. Nebraska is not a super highly traveled trucking lane. It's pretty expensive to get cars from that area. This one though was special enough that it was worth it. You saw in video one that we took the entire rear subframe and put it into this black car. I did use the carbon ceramics and the brake calipers that came on this black car, but the entire rear subframe, which includes all the control arms, the cradle itself, diff, axles, struts, was from the blue car. But we were able to recoup a lot of the money from that rear subframe from the black car. So for example, we already sold the diff. We have all of the passenger side axles. I have the passenger side mag ride strut and the carbon ceramics and the calipers from the blue car were kept together as an entire set. So I only have $500 for the rear subframe and that's because we really only needed the suspension corner, the driver suspension corner, and the axle, even though I took the entire subframe, it's kind of one of those like offset type scenarios. And we have a couple examples of that on this car. The wheels is another one. I took the entire set of wheels from the blue car, but I'm only gonna say $750 because I have three OEM black excellent condition Z28 wheels that are listed for roughly eight, $900 a piece which will ultimately sell for that. The people that want OEM ones versus the replica ones, they will eventually buy them because the supply on them is very, very low. The seats is another example, and this one was a little unexpected. I was expecting to be able to fix the seats that came in the black Z28. We knew it needed an airbag, but when they got here, the passenger seat, there was something wrong with the actual mechanism to lock the backrest. So it would go full recline or full incline, like you would fold it to get into the rear seat. So that was gonna be a problem. And then the driver seat frame was actually twisted a little bit, which you don't necessarily, you know, have to blame that on the accident. Sometimes if you get a bigger individual that's climbing in and out of it a lot, it will twist. It is possible from the accident that it twisted the backrest a little bit, but we went ahead, we just took the complete seats out of the blue car. The other set of seats from this car is essentially listed as a project set of seats somebody can you know put them in a resto rod type of car or you know go through fix them up we'll sell them you know obviously much cheaper than those recaros normally go for and uh, somebody can put them to use so we have a little bit of offset but i did add two grand here for the seats those recaros are normally thirty five hundred dollars for the ss's and they sell just like that we have the side skirts and the rear fender flare from the blue car that are on here. I have $500 for both of those. And then I have $1,000 for the side curtain airbags, the seat belts, and the airbag module, which we were able to plug right into this thing. Luckily, the GMs, once everything's plugged in, airbag light goes right away. Didn't have to take it to the dealer to get it reprogrammed or anything like that, but we do have $1,000 in airbags in this car. The glass was 400 bucks to get it removed. That also includes removing the glass from the blue car so we could cut that quarter panel off that I ended up not using. The caveat there is that the Z28 rear glass is actually thinner than the OEM ZL1 and SS glass. So I have a rear glass for this car that at some point somebody is going to want. And that might kind of wipe out that cost there, but we're gonna go ahead and include it for this video's purposes. Then we get on to the paint and body, which we have a grand total of $4,200 into. And that includes roughly $1,300 for a new OEM quarter panel. So my little forklift mistake ended up costing us a pretty penny. Which brings us to a grand total of $51,415.50. 50 
Now I am gonna add another $500 in miscellaneous expenses on the back end here, just for things like the dyno that you saw a little bit earlier. Um, I'm sure I'm missing something. So call it roughly $52,000 into this car. Now at this point, you're probably saying that is way too much money into this car. And I don't think that you're wrong. Honestly, I think we're probably gonna have to list this thing at about 60 grand to really make it worth our while to have purchased this vehicle. I don't think it's unrealistic that for the right buyer, maybe we can get to about 55. Um, that's really not enough meat on the bone to make it worthwhile for us. There is a similar car listed on eBay right now, clean title, a little bit higher mileage, but they want 70 grand for it. There are higher mileage examples that sell for under 50, but it's really gonna be if somebody wants the low mileage, which is something I haven't told you guys. This car has 4,300 miles on it. Super, super low, but it does have a salvage title. It has the entire rebuild process documented here on YouTube. The buyer can see it. It's just gonna depend if the title affects their mentality on it. Ultimately, Yes, it affects the collectability of it. It's always gonna be kind of a branded title. But with as rare as these cars are, if you have to pay 70 or more for one that is in similar condition, especially with the mods, then maybe somebody can justify that and the title isn't gonna bother them if they wanna drive it a little bit. But there are two talking points here that I want to go over because we've had a couple cars recently in the Smoke series and then also just rebuilds that you know a lot of people say, hey man, you guys are paying way too much for some of these cars. And in some instances, it's uh, you know it can't be helped. Um, in some instances, that's just what the market dictates and it's changing a lot. In other instances like this Z28, when am I gonna have the opportunity to fix one of these cars at any other point. It might not pop up again. This scenario that we had buying two of these cars was really pretty fantastic. And the blue car that we bought from the Chicago area, we have far less money into. I think we have about 32 grand into that car, which makes a whole lot more sense considering that we got the carbon fiber hood extractor from it. The front bumper isn't anything special. Um, you know, it has the fog light deletes and things like that, but it's basically just a newer 1LE bumper. So, you know, we didn't miss out on a lot of money on that car from the front end impact, and we had far less money into it. Point being that this car is so special and rare that we all kind of agreed that we just couldn't pass up on the opportunity. It was just really too special, and honestly, at that point, I didn't even know that there was only 1,800 of them. I can count on one hand the amount of times that I have seen one of these Z28s. They are just not out there. So to be able to do one, we're never gonna have a better fifth gen Camaro to try to repair. We had to take the opportunity. The other point that I want to make is about an investment. And I don't mean, you know, just strictly financially. We are building a YouTube channel. A lot of you guys have been here along the way with us, which we greatly, greatly appreciate. But in order to do that, it's like building a business. There are areas where you have to make investments and you have to sacrifice. We committed ourselves to the two uploads every single week a long time ago. And that's something that just needs to be done and needs to be maintained. We can't get away from it. The feedback we've had from the viewers like you, they seem to like that. So in order to maintain that, we can't always get these smoking deals on cars. It's just not out there. The climate right now in the auto industry especially, and maybe even exclusively to salvage, is very different than it has been in the past couple years. So one way or another, we are committed to making sure that we are making regular uploads. And what comes with that is what you could pretty much chalk up to maybe a little bit of waste sometimes. And that's why you see a car like this that was just such a unique opportunity that we couldn't pass up on. And we were willing to take a little bit of financial expense in order to make it happen. That is a wrap for the Z28 though. Another project here around the shop that has been completed. All those people down in the comments that like to get on us about not finishing cars. We're doing it on some of them. 
Others, they're just taking a little bit more time. This one, though, it is going to be up for sale here soon. Haven't exactly figured out the platform we're going to sell it on. The blower C5 Z06 that we found in a storage unit did extremely well on eBay Motors. We were very happy with that. The new owner is down south, I believe, Louisiana, and he absolutely loves the car. So great situation for everybody. Great purchase price for the gentleman that bought it, and we were happy with what it sold for. So always great when that works out but we have really not decided on where we're going to list this Z28 for sale. It is kind of the perfect time of year for as long as this project did draw out for seemingly as little work as it was. We were able to basically get to the time of year where we can take it around, do some, you know, cars and coffee type stuff, car show type stuff. Maybe depending on the venue, we might be able to do some racing with it. Race Motive up at Pocono is coming up in the very near future, and we are planning on bringing a lot of cars. If you guys are in the area buy spectator tickets for the race mode of a Pocono pretty sure the racer tickets are already sold out but we are bringing as many cars out of our fleet as we possibly can including the R8 a couple Porsches that you guys haven't really seen a ton on lately but they're making progress and then also Lee ZR1 should be wrapping up sometime in the very near future so plenty of fun stuff going on as always we appreciate all the support thank you everybody for tuning in and we will see you all in the next video